if we had to uh, start off by saying, well, what the heck is all this systems thinking and why does it matter? Early learning is a perfect example. The very fact that as a society, we're starting to appreciate the importance is a relatively more systemic perspective. The term systems thinking um, is an off-putting term. I mean, we're all stuck with it. We often wring our hands and go, gosh, I wish we had a better term. You know, someone years ago tried ecological thinking. That made everybody think, well, it was just about environmental systems. Uh, but you could really almost drop the system and say it's about thinking. It's about trying to understand the reality we're dealing with in a way that works better. Life is interconnection. A family is a system. A community is a system. As human beings, we grow up in systems. You can't not grow up in systems. Systems are not just a management artifact, you know, like the school administrative system, which is, of course, the way we use it. Another reason the term is a little bit problematic. You say the word system, and people think of two things. Either they think computer system, like, oh, God, we need a systems expert here, or they think about administrative system, as in, you know, well, hey, look, it ain't my fault. It's the stupid system. Neither of which is what we mean when we talk about systems thinking. We talk about tools and methods and ultimately skills for understanding interrelatedness, understanding the interconnections that actually shape our lives and shape what we can accomplish. The good news is we are waking up and we are starting to see the critical importance of early learning. The good news is also has another side effect though, which is that means there's a lot of different programs, a lot of different funding. You've got the uh, race to the top money that's starting to move into early learning in California. You've got state funds, you've got state agencies, you've got community agencies. So you have a lot of different players and then a lot of boundaries that get developed. This often results, usually results, in fragmentation. But I would think that to the extent you can have different people in different programs, working through and coordinated by different agencies at different levels, using some of the same tools and methods, you start to produce coherence. We've seen this again and again in complex systems. Common tools, common methods, with a common set of ideas of what are the skills we're trying to build to be better thinkers for the benefit of our kids. To the extent there's commonality across those, you can communicate. You have a common language. Somebody who's working on a problem over here with one programmatic context can talk to somebody over here about, gee, you know, where, where was that statement on the ladder of inference? Or, hey, in the iceberg, are we dealing here at the event level or are we dealing at a diff deeper system structure level? Are we dealing with a quick fix or a more fundamental solution? This becomes common linguistic terms, a common language that people in different parts of a very complex interconnected undertaking can use to talk to each other, to help each other. One of the ways it becomes coherent, as I say, one of the ways you know you're making progress is you start to build networks of collaboration that cross the institutional boundaries. These sort of learning communities really are the human face of systems thinking. Learning communities that arise through people getting to know each other, to want to help each other. This is not complicated. The way networks of collaboration develop is people help each other. Who answers whose email? Who responds to a telephone call and says, hey, we got this problem. Is there anything you've encountered that's kind of like that? And before you know it, people are starting to help each other across all the institutional boundaries.